Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Reborn Muslim, the podcast all about being a revert to Islam. I'm your host Avlon and it's almost Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, it should be tomorrow when this is coming out. Um, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about Ramadan, but specifically about preparing for Ramadan kind of last minute. Because the situation I'm in this year, you know, every year it's different. Uh, just like any season, obviously, like years come and go. And you're always in a different situation when the year, um, you know, when the season comes comes again. And this Ramadan season has been, alhamdulillah, full of blessings already. Like I'm very busy recently with my content creation. Things have been going so well. I feel so blessed, alhamdulillah. However, because I've had a lot going on and I've been very busy, I haven't been focusing on Ramadan the way I want to. And I haven't been preparing at all. Because there's been some years, because for me, this is my fourth Ramadan. So I've had like a few, you know, I have a few under my belt. I've gotten a little bit of experience with it. And there's been some years in the past that, you know, I prepared like a month in advance. I had everything ready to go. And other years like this one, um, I didn't think about Ramadan much until like the week before, honestly. And that's not ideal at all. I'm not trying to say that that's a good thing. But the reality is some of us are in this situation, whether it's because we're super busy with good or bad things, whether we're stressed out or whatever it might be, or maybe you're a brand new Muslim and you really don't know where to start. Um, this will be relevant for you as well. So what I wanted to do today was just give us some grounding reminders about Ramadan, about feeling overwhelmed, about having that anxiety, like, oh my gosh, a, year, a month, not a year of fasting, a month of fasting. And how am I going to do it? What am I going to do? I just want to kind of give us all some reminders, born Muslims and reverts, especially reverts though, um, as well as let you know what I've been doing for like really simple um, preparations that you can make. Um, again, just what I'm doing. I'm not saying it's the right way of doing anything, but things that have helped me ground myself and center myself and find my, you know, my peace and my tranquility in this time of that can be, you know, very anxious. It can be a lot of anxiety and a lot of, oh my gosh, how am I going to plan enough? Like, am I ready? You know what I mean? So this is how I've been centering myself, preparing. Um, and also I just want to highlight that these will be very like easy ways that you can prepare kind of almost like a triage situation where you're finding like the things you need to prioritize right now and then kind of go down from there. So hopefully this will help ease your anxiety about Ramadan if you have any um, and help you just kind of figure out where do I start and yeah, so let's get started inshallah in the name of Allah, bismillah, let's talk about Ramadan. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to mention is that whenever we feel anxious, overwhelmed, or some kind of negative feelings about something good that we're doing, something Islamic that we're doing, for example, preparing for Ramadan, or feeling like we haven't done enough, um, so kind of the lack thereof, whenever we have these kind of negative feelings, I just want to remind you that this could very likely be whispers from the shaitan trying to discourage us from growing closer to a, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that's exactly what he, he wants to do. He wants to pull you away from Allah. He wants to make you feel like you're not doing enough and he wants that you to compare yourself to other Muslims and say, look at what they're doing. You know, why am I not doing that much? Why am I not as good as them? Why have I not prepared enough? Why do I feel anxious or even have that feeling of guilt? Like why is everyone else so excited for Ramadan and I'm just stressed about it? I'm just sad, especially for us as reverts. We don't have our family to fast with. Or even if you're a born Muslim and this is your first Ramadan away from your family, whatever it might be, um, I remember feeling that sense of guilt of like, why is everyone else excited and I just feel awful and I feel anxious and I I don't want to fast. Like, let's just be real. I don't want to do this. You know what I mean? That's definitely how I felt the first year and honestly, even the second year. Um, so I just want to let you know those feelings are totally normal. Everything is dependent on your situation, of course. So it really depends on what you're going through at the time. But it's absolutely normal to feel that way. However, don't get stuck in a rut. Do not listen to those whispers. Whether it's coming from yourself, it's coming from the shaitan, really it doesn't even matter. At the end of the day, it's going to give you the same result, which is you're going to want to give up and you might actually give up. Or even if it's not giving up, it might be like giving up in small ways. For example, like I don't even know where to start with reading the Quran, so I just I won't read it all this month. Like it's just too much. Or, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to fast this year. If, if you're a brand new Muslim, you're like, I don't know how I'm going to handle this. How am I going to fast? Okay, then I'm just not going to fast and I'll just fast next year. You see what I mean? So it's like you're not giving up on Islam, but you're giving up um, on really important things, especially if fasting. This is a pillar of Islam. This is obligatory. Um, 
So you see what I'm saying? Like anytime we think negatively this way and we start telling ourselves, we start comparing ourselves most first and foremost, um, especially with social media, we start seeing other people's reels and pictures and oh my gosh, look at how much they've prepared. They have, you know, all these lists of recipes and all these things that they're getting ready to do, all these events they're going to. And you can like very easily start feeling like you're not doing enough. And again, that starts uh, transforming. Those negative thoughts can start transforming into the feeling of, why am I even trying? That's ultimately where it goes. So please do not listen to those whispers. Again, whether it's from yourself or from the shaitan, it it doesn't even matter at that point um, because it's going to have the same negative effect on you and it's going to lead you in the wrong direction. It's okay to feel this way. I want you to like know that you can, like you're allowed to feel that way. You're allowed to feel overwhelmed and you're not weird for feeling that way. Even if it seems like every other person, every other Muslim you know is like super excited about Ramadan and no one else seems to share your feelings, I promise you, you're not alone. I promise you, you are not the only one feeling this way. First of all, even if no one else is talking about it, there's so many other people feeling the same way as you. It's okay to feel that way. You're allowed to feel that way. However, don't get stuck. Don't get yourself into this trench of like, I'm just, you know, I don't even want to try anymore. I don't even know where to start. Instead of letting those over or those, yeah, those overwhelming, but, you know, anxious and negative feelings overwhelm you and just push you into um, inaction. Instead, take those feelings, the negative feelings, the discomfort and channel it into action. So that's really what I wanted to talk about today is like what action you should take or, you know, like I recommend. Again, I'm not um, basing this off of like anything scholarly. This is just what I recommend. This is something that I focus on or things that I focus on during Ramadan. Um, And yeah, I just want to give us that reminder. Do not get stuck in the negative thinking. Push it, use it, channel it, hold it in and like push it, let it push you towards, um, towards action and towards getting things done. Okay. Without all, with, with all that being said, let's talk about what action. So one thing I did that has helped me tremendously is because one day I was feeling like, you know what, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I haven't prepared for Ramadan. It's literally next week. What do I do? So I literally just went to my Google Drive and made like an Excel sheet or Google Sheet, whatever. Um, Google Sheets or, you know, Excel Sheets, lists, these kind of things really work for me. I'm like that kind of person, like a visual organization kind of person. I love stats. I love graphs. Okay. I love... Um, charts and Excel sheets like that just is like brings me peace. Okay. Like it helps me channel all my thoughts because I tend to have a lot of thoughts running rampantly. So I like to put them all in one place. This is what works for me. This might not work for you. Maybe you're more of like, you know, I feel like I probably have discussed this before. I think I probably have undiagnosed ADHD. Um, So I have lots of different ideas going in all different ways, you know, so I need a place to channel them all. Maybe you're not that way though. Maybe something that would be easier for you is just even like journaling or, um, you know, just like tackling each thing that you want to prepare for one thing each day. It Everybody's different. Everyone has a different way of operating, but this is what works for me. So again, so I made an Excel sheet and I just put in Ramadan Mubarak and I made it look really cute and I put like little emojis and you know what I mean? I just made it thematic just because it might seem like so small and silly. Like, why would I even mention that? But for me, it's like if what I'm looking at looks nice and it makes me happy and makes me excited um, just seeing it, then, you know, it just everything works together, right? Like you when you look good, you feel good, kind of the same thing. So I made it look cute and try to like get myself excited rather than, again, feeling negative and feeling overwhelmed. So I made the Excel sheet and I put in different rows for all the different things I want to focus on. Because, of course, there's going to be more things than what I've already put here and what I'm about to discuss. These are the things that I, um, like I mentioned at the top of the episode, kind of like triage situation where it's like these things really need to be addressed first. Like this is what's really, really important right now. And then everything else can kind of come later. You know, like inshallah, that'll sort of sort itself out. Um, And of course, these things can change over the month as well. But I at least want to have something like a foundation to start off with. So let's just go over the sections. So of course, the month of Ramadan is the month of the Quran. Um, If you don't know what I'm talking about, what this means is that the Quran was revealed to the Prophet in the month of Ramadan, or like the first time revelation came down to him from Angel Jibreel um, was in the month of Ramadan. 
So if you ever wondered why do we talk about the Quran so much in, in this month, that's why. And that's why people call it the month of the Quran. So this is a wonderful time to focus on Quran. I mean, it's a wonderful time to focus on everything we focus on as Muslims because the um, it's, a, it's a very special time. It's a very blessed time. And the, the good deeds are multiplied. So, but especially the Quran, because again, it was revealed during this month. So what I put here was kind of my routine and my schedule for how much I want to read a day and how much Arabic I want to practice each day. Um, so it depends. This will completely vary per person. Maybe you're not in Arabic classes yet. You haven't started doing that yet. Then this is not as relevant. Um, unless, I mean, this would be a great time if you want to start looking into the Arabic alphabet and just watching like kids videos on that on YouTube. They help tremendously, honestly. And it'll just give you like a, a base level understanding of the letters. Um, I would recommend doing that. If you know zero Arabic, I think that would be a good thing to focus on. Um, but if you're like, you know what, this is not like I'm a little overwhelmed already. I don't think I need to add in a new language. That's understandable. But one thing you should definitely plan, in my opinion, is how much Quran you're going to read because we can get the Quran in any language that we speak, right? If you speak English, there's English translation. If you speak Spanish, there's Spanish translations. Um, so whatever language you can you speak, you can at least get a translation of the Quran. Um, and a lot of people will like to go over the whole Quran in the month of Ramadan. So there's like 29 or 30 days and they're going to, you know, they'll uh, flesh it out so that they'll read the appropriate amount to where they they complete the whole Quran in the in the span of the month, which is awesome. I think that's a really good idea. Um, I haven't planned it out that way for myself, particularly because I find that I have a really hard time sitting and reading for long periods of time. And when I do that, when I do sit and read for a long period of time, um, I tend to like, how do I say like I the my understanding level or the amount that actually like permeates into my memory or that I, I actually am actively reading, it gets lower and lower because as I mentioned, undiagnosed ADHD, I have a hard time focusing. Um, and so if I read a small amount, I can actually really focus on it. But if I read a long stretch of a book in one sitting, I'm not going to remember most of it and I'm not going to be paying attention. And I and the thing is with the Quran, for me personally, the way I see it is like that's amazing to get through the whole Quran in a month. I think that's wonderful. Um, however, what's important to me is understanding it rather than just getting through it because I could just sit for 40 minutes every day and read. But how much is of that is actually going to get through to me? You know, because I like to have a notebook next to me when I'm reading the Quran every night and I like to take notes and I don't always but when I read a smaller amount, maybe five pages, maybe 10 pages, I'm able to really take in that information and take notes on it and put down verses that spoke to me, things that I want to refer back to, things that I want to ask an imam about and I want to know more about that topic. That means more to me than just reading the whole thing because I can already guarantee you for myself, knowing myself, if I read a, a whole bunch, if I read 50 pages in one day, I'm not going to be taking in the amount that I need to. You know what I mean? So I'm hoping to read. Personally, I'm thinking like 10 pages a day would be good for me because that's more than I usually read, but it's also not so much that I'm going to zone out. That's what I'm th figuring. And I think probably I can break it down with like maybe five pages in the morning after Fajr um, and then five pages in the evening after Aisha. Who knows? But I think that 10 pages a day is realistic for me. That's another thing I should have mentioned. Your goals for Ramadan and the things that you're preparing for, please make them realistic. Yes, you should make them, you know, you should be ambitious and you should want to do as much as you can during Ramadan and make use of this time. But also don't set such lofty goals that you know, like knowing yourself and knowing the situation you're you're in, you're most likely not going to reach those goals. Don't do that to yourself because you're setting yourself up for failure and to be disappointed. And then you're just going to feel bad when in reality, it's like you knew at the start that wasn't probably going to happen. You know what I mean? So I think it's important when setting goals to, um, you know, if you've heard of like SMART goals, like each letter stands for something, and I think the R stands for realistic or like maybe the A stands for attainable, something like that. Like this is a really important part of goal setting is making sure they're actually within your reach. And it's not going to be something that, again, that you're setting yourself for failure. So definitely try to set realistic goals. Take these things into consideration. Like I just said, I know myself. I know I'm not going to be sitting there reading 25 pages plus a day. I'm just that's not going to happen. So why would I even set myself up that way? So for me, if I read 10 pages every day for all of Ramadan, alhamdulillah, I'm going to feel great. If I read more than that, then I'll be super happy. 
Um, and if I was able to get through the whole Quran in, in the month, I would be thrilled. But at the same time, I'm not going to be hard on myself if I don't because I know myself. I know my boundaries. I know my limits. So that's what I have planned for myself for Quran reading. And then I'm hoping to practice Arabic for about 20 minutes a day, which is usually what I do anyways. Um, I, pra- I try to practice Arabic every day and I practice for, you know, sometimes less than that, probably sometimes more than that. But usually I think it's about 20 minutes to start with. So that shouldn't be too difficult. I think, again, knowing myself, that's like a realistic goal. Um, it'll be difficult because my Ramadan or my my Ramadan classes, my Arabic classes, they're specifically it's like Quranic Arabic. So you could say my Quran classes. Um, they are not going on during the month of Ramadan. So it's really like going to be self-guided, which I have a problem with self-guided things because I'm like all or nothing. Like I'll work really hard at it or I'll like not do it at all. <laughs> so I'm going to try to be consistent. Again, I'm trying to set realistic goals that I can actually stick to rather than like, oh, I'm going to practice Arabic for two we- two hours every day and I do it for one day and then I don't do it again the rest of the month. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm hoping to do for Arabic. Okay, so that's the first category is the Quran, reading, and Arabic. Next category that I have is donations. So here I have um, an organization that I wanted to donate to for my zakat. So I did, um, I think it's called My 10 Nights. This is not like a sponsored thing. They didn't tell me to include or they didn't pay me or anything. I just learned about this organization a few years ago. And I think it's cool because they they automate your donations to be in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, which if you didn't know, these are very, very blessed nights. Like the the blessing and the the good deeds are like multiplied by quite a bit during these last 10 days. So you can set up your donation ahead of time. So what I did was like I calculated my zakah. I'm not going to give all the details here because I simply just don't know them. I'm not the person to refer to. Please ask your local imam if you need more details on on the zakah, which if you don't know, that's um, the obligatory charity. That's one of the, again, one of the five pillars, super important. Um, And you don't have to give it during Ramadan. You can give it at any point, but many people do just because first of all, it's easy to remember just to give it the same time every year. Secondly, as I mentioned, blessings are multiplied. So it's a really good time to give charity. Um, so what I did was like, I went online, figured out how much I have to give in zakah. Then I went to my 10 nights, put in that amount, and then you spread it out or they spread it out automatically for you over the 10 nights. So it's a really nice service. I like it. I use it for zakah. So just in general, I would put any organizations that I'd like to donate to. Um, yeah, that's just like a, a good thing to keep in mind ahead of time. It's a really good time to donate to organizations with your, your money and with your time, which I'll get into later. Okay, so that was the donations category. Next category, which is a very practical one, is food. What I have in this category is some suhoor ideas and some iftar ideas, which if you're not familiar, suhoor is the pre-fast meal. So this is what we eat before fajr, before we start our fast um, or before dawn, actually. And then iftar is the opposite. So that's what we break our fast with in the evening um, at maghrib time. So I just wanted to have an idea. I'm not going to go through an extensive meal prep planning thing because I just know for myself, like whenever I do that, at least during Ramadan, like it's not going to work out that way precisely. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to be going to events. There's going to be things I'm invited to. People are going to invite me to the house for iftar. That's just the way it is. That's how Ramadan goes. And so I don't, especially as a revert, we're just kind of like drifting in the wind, like whatever, you know, whoever invites me, yeah, I'm going to go. So and I can't anticipate these things. So, um, so I'm just, I want to have like a loose idea and just, I wanted to, um, also just have an idea of like some essential items that I want to buy for Ramadan, like food items, like some things that I definitely want to have. Obviously dates. Everybody should have dates for Ramadan. If you can get your hands on them, get some dates of any kind. It's a sunnah to break your fast with dates. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would do with an odd number of dates with one or three or five, um, and with water. That's the perfect way to to break your fast. And also personally, I eat them before I fast as well because dates give you um, some energy. So for me, I find that it's easier to fast when I have them in the morning. Get some dates. Okay, get your hands on some dates. Um, And in addition to that, please try to make sure that you're um, mindful of where the dates are from. Because a lot of times I've heard that there's a lot of date companies that um, might present that they're being or present themselves as being grown in like an Arab country. But they're not grown in an Arab country. They're grown in a country that I'm not going to name that has a blue and white flag that we don't want to support. 
Okay, so um, make sure your dates are coming from a good place. They're coming from a, ideally from a Muslim country. Um, and if not, if you want to just avoid the topic or the issue altogether, let's say you live in America, try getting American grown dates. That's something I recommend to people. If you can't find them from anywhere else, just get ones that were grown in the U.S. So at least you know where they're coming from, especially because out here in California, um, we have this area, Coachella Valley. It's a few hours from where I am and it's legit like desert. Okay. And they grow dates out there. It's like the perfect climate to grow dates. So that's what I was actually looking for was like dates grown out here. But I found some from Saudi. So I decided to buy those instead. Decided, you know, I kind of figured they're probably, probably better. I don't know. I just wanted to try them out. Um, But yeah, definitely get dates. Also, definitely get some kind of hydrating fruits and vegetables. I like to get watermelon and cucumber because as far as I know, don't quote me on this, but I believe these are uh, prophetic foods. So they're like foods that the prophets Allah when they sell them was known to eat. Um, and also in addition to that, of course, the water content is very high. So they're they're going to be hydrating. So that's a good thing because you're not only getting hydrated from the water you're drinking in the morning, but also even from the foods you're eating. So I definitely recommend watermelon, cucumber, anything with a high water content, have that for sahur. Um, I also personally get yogurt because I'm ten- I am tend to get UTIs from fasting. Sorry, it's a TMI, but I know it's a common issue. So if in case you're worried about this, just wanted to go over it. Um, I think women are more prone to UTIs in general. And especially when you're fasting, you're not getting water in. So you're more prone to it. So to, to help, um, you know, try to avoid getting UTIs, you can uh, have something with probiotics in it. I eat uh, yogurt now, which has a lot of probiotics. It also has like healthy fats and it has some protein in it if you're drinking like or if you're eating like full, you know, like normal yogurt, like Greek yogurt, for example, because I used to have um, what's vegan yogurt, like coconut yogurt, but that doesn't have so much protein. Um, But I'm actually not vegan anymore. Spoiler alert. (laughs) So I just have normal like Greek yogurt now. Um, And then I also for myself, at least I got um, vegan bacon And I'll just have like eggs in the morning because I need to have something. You know what I mean? Like I can't get by just having a few pieces of fruit in the morning. So what I'm planning to do, inshallah, is to make like a little fruit salad with dates and cucumber, watermelon, and like a little lemon dressing just to have, you know, something that tastes nice. Then I got the strawberry yogurt and I'm hoping to put like matcha powder in there. So it has like a little bit, get a little energy from that Um, and probably put fruit in there. And then I'm going to have like vegan bacon and like an egg on the side or like have that with it just so it can get again more protein and just something that's going to kind of like tide me over for the day. So that's what I'm like planning on doing for Sahur. For Iftar, I got shrimp and I'm going to make shrimp fried rice. Inshallah. I love shrimp fried rice or just any kind of fried rice. So um, yeah, those are just some ideas that I have. But really what's important here is making sure you're getting water content in or water in at Sahur getting as hydrated as possible and eating something that's going to sustain you for the day because the worst thing is skipping suhoor or having a really unsatisfying suhoor and then you're just like not feeling good for the rest of the day. So definitely take that into like take that, you know, think about it ahead of time and just get some fruits, some vegetables with a lot of water in them and just eat something that's going to tide you over. And I didn't mention it, but obviously drink as much water as possible in the morning. Okay, the next section that I have is tarawih. Um, this is a prayer that we do only during Ramadan. It's after Isha um, and it tends to be a very long prayer. It's usually either 8 or 20 rakah, so units of prayer. I don't think it's ever anything other than that. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's only either 8 units or 20 units. Um, and they break it up throughout the night. So this this will go for a long time, sometimes to like 11 p.m. or later. And it's super fun. It's super exhausting because you're standing for long periods of time. But it's a really cool experience. I remember the first time I prayed Tarawi, I like almost cried. Like I got teary eyed because I was like, oh my gosh, like I can feel like a rumble on the ground when everyone goes into into Sajud because there's so many people here. Like I've never experienced something like that. And it made me so happy. So, um, So what I put in this section is all the different masjids that I want to check out, like I, w- I want to visit during for Tarawih prayer. Because the thing is, um, I'm very blessed, alhamdulillah, to have a ton of masjids near me. In Southern California, we just have a lot of, we have a lot of Muslims here. We have a big Muslim community and there's tons of masjids around. So I put in like six or seven masjids that I want to visit during this time. 
Um, and also, I feel like people just we call it masjid hopping. People do masjid hopping. Um, if you're born Muslim or if you're, you've been Muslim for a while, you probably already heard that term before. Um, but I feel like people do that, especially during Ramadan, because there's always things going on. So they want to visit everywhere. So here I just put in all the different masjids that I want to visit for this prayer. And it will be every night of Ramadan, inshallah. So I have plenty of time to visit all of them. So that's that section. The next section that I want to focus on was volunteer events and masjid events that I want to attend. So there's only one thing that I have in there right now that I'm already signed up for. But as the month goes by, I want to start adding in more, inshallah. Um, there's others that I can think of that I've already been, like I've already gotten information on that I could go to. But one thing I'll mention here is do as much volunteer as you, you know, volunteer work as you can and as you, you can commit to comfortably. But also keep in mind, if you're going to be doing something that's kind of strenuous, um, especially if this is your first time fasting, just keep that in mind. Because I know for me, like I just simply don't have the energy during Ramadan. Like I do not have the energy to do a lot of, um, a lot of uh, volunteer events. I don't have it in me as much as I want to. I, I simply can't. And so don't feel bad about that. Honestly, it's like do the best that you can. Give your time and your money to these organizations that are helping people around the world. Um, do as much as you can, but don't feel bad not being able to do it all and know your limits. And I know my limits and I know that I can't do all these these volunteer events. I know I don't have the energy. Um, and I'm going to do as much as I can, inshallah. But again, don't don't like just sign up for a bunch of them and then feel overwhelmed and then feel bad that you didn't go to them. You know what I mean? Just like I was saying before, be realistic, know yourself, and um, but still do as much as you can, inshallah. Okay, so that was the masjid and volunteer events. The last thing I have is, is it's relevant to me. It's not going to be relevant to everyone, but what I'll say for this section is just like, you could just have like a miscellaneous section. Of course, again, you don't have to do it this way at all. You don't even have to do an Excel sheet. This is just what works for me. But there might be random things that you want to keep in mind. Oh, a really important thing you want you might want to, you know, write down is like specifically your goals for Ramadan. Um, I remember one time a, a sheikh like told a group of us reverts, we were in a class he told us every Ramadan, just get a paper and write. Like I'm as I'm saying this, I'm looking at my paper from last year and I have it dated and everything, March 22nd, um, 2022. He said, get a paper and write the date on it and say, he said, right at the top of it, my prayers will be answered. And then put, you know, Ramadan goals and then write in whatever your goals are. He's like, what, whether it's about your life, about finding a spouse, about something you want to work on with yourself. And then also specific things, you know, like I want to have uh, more taqwa of Allah. Like I want to memorize more surahs of the Quran or I want to fix this thing about my prayer or whatever it might be. Or even like I want to do this many um, dhikr every day or like which dhikrs. You know what I'm saying? Like what, like, what do you want to do during the month? So definitely I need to work on that. I haven't even done that for this year. Um, I definitely recommend doing that. But this last section for me, what I put was my content schedule. So that, that was something else. I'm just saying I recommend doing that that thing that I just mentioned, the Ramadan goals. Um, definitely recommend that. But my last section of my um, little Excel sheet was like content schedule because, again, just trying to be practical, um, I want to balance everything out. And so instead of just being like, well, I guess I'll just figure it out. And then I feel like if I do that, I'll either post things that like I don't really like are not really relevant to Ramadan and like they're not really important. Um and I'll do that too much. And like, I'll just spend too much time on Instagram and waste my time during Ramadan. Or I'll just like not do anything when I could be actually posting beneficial things. You know what I mean? So I already put in like things that I have planned for Ramadan so that I can balance it out. So I can not use Ramadan or <laughs> not use social media very much during Ramadan. So I don't overwhelm um, all the important things that I need to be doing and, and just, you know, waste all my time on social media, but also I can use it for good, inshallah, and to, you know, provide, you know, beneficial reminders, inshallah. So that's why I have that section for myself. Um, but definitely you should have like a goal, you know, set some goals for yourself for the month of Ramadan. And that's something I need to work on as well. But that's the Excel sheet that I have. Those are the things that I'm going to be trying to focus on this Ramadan. Hopefully that was a good reminder for us all. I hope this um, cooled your anxiety. If you are feeling anxious, if you're feeling overwhelmed, hopefully this brought you down a few levels and just reminded you like, we're going to be okay. We're going to get through this together. Um, don't listen to those, that nagging voice telling you you're not doing enough or you're not good enough. 
you are definitely good enough. You're doing the best you can. And if you feel like you're slacking, make a list like this. If that helps you do what you need to do and and get started, get some work done, you know, like put the work into Ramadan because really you get out of it what you put into it. That's what I can say. So um, again, hopefully that was a good reminder. Um, and I can't wait for this Ramadan. I'm so excited to experience it with you all, but really also just to hopefully come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this Ramadan. And I hope that for, and I wish that for all of us, I pray that for all of us, that this Ramadan is, you know, is a means of growing closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and growing in our Iman, inshallah. So I am so excited. Ramadan 2023, it's here, you guys. Um, thank you so much for tuning in today and I'll see you again very soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.